<laughs> good morning. <laughs> Very good. A uh, special welcome to all the guests we have here this morning and to those who are watching us online now or maybe watching us online a little later today. Um, I'm Beth Lindsay, again, uh, Chad Henze and I are your deacons for this morning. We are welcoming our guest minister, the pastor John Shaw and his lovely wife, Anne. They are joining us this morning. Uh, John has been a minister, UCC minister for over 25 years and he is also recognized within the American Baptist Church. There's a whole bio um, about him on the back of your bulletin if you'd like to read it. Um, so he lives in, let me see if I get this right, Southbridge, Massachusetts. And um, so, and he's been, um, providing pulpit supply in churches in Maine, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. So we are very glad to have them here with us this morning. Um, the, for music, we are going to be using the red and the black hymnals. So when you look in the bulletin and it says PH or NCH, NCH means the black one and PH means the red one. And so that's where our music will be coming from this morning. The restrooms are down the hall to the right. Um, if you need those services. And let's see, if you have a joy or concern this morning that you'd like to share with the congregation, you'll notice at the end of your pew that there is an orange card that looks something like this. Please fill that out and the deacons will be by to pick up um, those from you. Probably will be coming through, through uh, during the gathering hymn. So um, that's there as well. Let's see, for other announcements we have this morning, if you've been watching the screens up in front, there have been uh, several announcements, but a couple that I want to point out. We are collecting gift cards for Granby Social Services to help those families in need to buy um, needed things for their children for the school year as it comes up, meaning, you know, sneakers, clothes, that kind of thing. So if you are interested and Relating to that, uh, the cards may be picked, you may drop them off either at the First Church uh, Church Office or at the South Church Church Office. We are having coffee hour today, um, right after church. Lisa Reinhardt has provided 80 mini cupcakes. So um, please go out, stop by, have some time to fellowship out in the courtyard right after church. Um, also, there's coming up on September 17th, a fall retreat. Information about that should be online as well as in the bulletin. And uh, I understand that Kathy has some announcements that she'd like to share this morning. So Kathy, why don't you come on up? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? All right. So um, Granby Racial Reconciliation, which the church has supported so graciously, is having uh, the postponed and postponed again courageous conversations on race at Sam and Brooke today, Pavilion 1, uh, from 12 to 1.30. So you are welcome to come. Um, and we also are sponsoring dialogues on race discussion. Uh, starting September 27th through November 8th. It's a once a night weekly on Tuesday evenings. Um, and our dear friend, Reverend Dr. Sandra Fisher, will be facilitating those discussions. So please go to Granby Racial Reconciliation's website, uh, grambyrr.com, and there's a flyer for that in the back. As well as um, a fellow Grambyite, Colleen Fitzgerald, is going to be directing uh, a dance performance at Kimura Cl Kamora's Cultural Corner in Hartford this Saturday from four to six. It's Negra, Negra, Negra Soy, black, black, black. I am a black woman. And uh, so just wanted to put that out there to support a local woman uh, in expressing um, the joy of being a black woman. There are 10 women um, that are from Hartford that she's directing in this performance. So there's a flyer in the, in the back as well. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. We are an open and affirming church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let our worship continue.
please join me in the call to worship. We come today to express ourselves in our faith. How can we do that? We need to open our hearts to God's word, our lives to Jesus Christ. Let's bring ourselves to the best places to hear and listen and be part of what God has planned for us. Our scripture reading this morning, there are two passages. The first one is in Luke chapter 12, verses 29 through 56, and the second is Hebrews 11, 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. Um, we're reading, I'll be reading from the Pew Bible, which is the Revised Standard Version, if you'd like to follow along. It begins on page 905. As we hear the words of scripture, let us listen in the words for the word of God. This is kind of a long passage, so please bear with me. Starting in verse 29. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious mind. For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old and with treasures in the heavens that do not fail. Where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will gird himself and will 
have them sit at the table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third watch and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But, I, but know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant upon his master, whom, let me start again. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if the servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will punish him and will put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, but did not make ready for or act according to his will, shall, re shall receive a severe beating. But he who did not know and did what deserved a beating shall receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required. And of him to whom men commit much will demand the more. I came to cast fire upon earth and would that it it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For henceforth, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the, the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And from Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 29, that's page 1051 in your pew Bible. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put far foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They, were about in, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
the grass withers and the flower fades. Good morning. Good morning. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Bring light to all who hear them and carry them, let them carry them with them. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Faith, what is it? What can you do with it? Or what can't you do? There's a lot you can't do, but it won't get you anywhere. And there's a lot you can do, and it'll bring you right to where you want to be. But you can't reach out and touch it. You can't put it in your pocket. You can't read it like a book or see it like a TV screen or a computer screen. You might see the word, but you don't see faith. It's not something that you can really make sense out of, it seems. It's a vague word. And yet, it's something that we all have, that we've all used, that we all need. We can look at, well, with the, in the Hebrews, when Paul was talking and writing to the Hebrews, and he was talking about faith. And in the early Egyptians, when they went out, or the early Israelites, when they left Egypt, they left under the leadership of Moses. And Moses was called on to be their leader. And his first words were, not me, Lord. I can't do that. I can't lead these people. I, 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 I stutter. I'm not a good speaker. And God's words to Moses was, have faith. You can lead them. Another way of thinking of faith is to say, that faith is something that you believe in, but you don't necessarily see it or have it. Thus, I have in my pocket all the time a little cross that says believe. It gives you the faith. It keeps your faith going. As so Paul wrote to the Hebrews, when they left Egypt, they came to the Red Sea. And they were told to cross the sea. Huh, how can we do that? Have faith that you can do it. And the winds came and the water parted. And the sand was there. Ever try walking on wet sand? It's hard. It's, it's not the easiest way to make a rapid move. And so they had hundreds or thousands of these 
Israelites crossing the Red Sea across that nice wet sand area. And what happened? Because they had faith. They had faith in what Noah was telling them. They had faith in the fact that they were going to cross the sea. They got across. The Egyptians coming behind with chariots and horses. You can imagine where the horses were and where the chariots were in that wet sand as the waters came back and they were washed out. It was faith that brought the Egyptians, the Hebrews, Israelites out of Egypt. The wall as the uh, spiritual says Joshua fit the battle at Jericho the walls came tumbling down and he did that he was told you can do it have faith you'll win the battle and so for a week he had his troops marching around the city of Jericho and all of that tumbling down came because of their motion and their pounding. It was faith that brought them to that, that point. In the book of Luke, the scriptures from Luke, when Jesus said in the parable that the man who is waiting, whose servants are waiting for him to return whenever he gets there, will be taken care of. They'll be served. Have faith and stay awake. The other part of that was that if the man knew when the thief was going to break into his house, you know, none of us know when that's going to happen. I read this past week it happened in, in broad daylight that someone broke into somebody's house and caused a lot of damage. And it's not at night that it always happens. If you have detection that will at least help to let you know that somebody was around. If you have faith, you won't be changing your residence because you'll have, you'll be protected. God will protect you. These are different ways in which faith works. If any of you have any doubts about it, don't. Don't doubt it. Jesus said he didn't come to give peace on earth, but to stir things up. And stir things up he did. And stir things up he still does. Because a lot of us don't have enough faith in God, a faith in the works of Jesus to work with us and through us and with us to get things done the way they should be. We have to think of others as well as ourselves. And if a family is thinking of themselves only as you can have heard, the arguments are going to be between members of the family. And that certainly doesn't lead to peace. But Jesus said, have faith. 
Believe that things can change. Believe that people will love you as much as you think they don't. The times when everything just seems to go awry. And yet, with faith in God, then you have a true handle on things, whatever they happen to be. They don't just blow away, but you have to do something about it. You have to have faith. We have to stay in step. If you don't stay in step with the, in the parade, you can throw the whole parade off of schedule. If you're playing ball and you drop the ball, it could be the end of the game. Faith means that you can take the ball and run with it, but don't run backwards. You'll be running forward all the time. If you take the word faith to see what it stands for, F, F is for forward action. A is for the action. F is for forward. I is in. T would be this. And H would be hard work. But that's all in faith that you have that to go on. You can't see faith. You can't touch it. But you can have it. That's what has been proven through acts that we've read about in the Bible many times. Faith is what keeps us going today. Reaching out and being part of the life, part of the life of this church, part of the life of the new church. that you're all part of. You have to have faith that the new church will grow and glow in the community. You only can do that when you believe and you know that you're part of it. God reaches out to everyone. Where you put your trust in God, you maintain faith. Your project will be completed. Newness will be a new, will be an old word after a while. Keep your eye on the goal line so that you know where you're at. 
It's faith that will bring you home. To your new church. To your new life. To your new growth. That you need. Believe. Have faith in God. Watch for everything that's going on. And be sure, be sure that you are a part of it and aware of it and with it. So that your faith it is an oaken bucket. And my faith looks up to you, O oh God. Hymn number 348 in the Pilgrim Hymnal.
as we turn to the prayers of concern, the prayers of joy, and the prayers of thankfulness. Are there any others that need to be turned in? Prayers of concern for Janet. Starting radiation for cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers of concern for all those struggling with food uncertainty. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayers for a close friend as she had surgery and quick healing for her. Lord, hear our prayer. And prayer of joy Congratulations to the Dowd family, where on August 6th, their daughter Sarah was married to Mark Brady. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon those who have the prayers of concern but also we ask your blessings upon the people who have their own private concerns that they can lift up to you. Listen to them. Reach out your healing hand for those who need. Reach out a hand to shake for those who need congratulations. We ask your blessings upon all that are here today. We ask your blessings upon those who are watching over the internet. May they all have their answers come true for the joys and concerns that they have for you, to bless them and build them up. We ask that you watch over this country, that we may come to conclusions, not finality, that we may do good for the people of this country. For those in the military, we ask you to watch over them, to keep them safe, bring them home to their loved ones. I ask this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his, pre his disciples and us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget of our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Five. 418.
as we depart from this gathering. Let us carry forth the word of God and the actions that you heard about be your guide at living play. Amen. peace.